this is a big old frozen chunk of poopy. Right now, John is putting in the transmission bolts up to the motor. All right, so we just put all the bell housing bolts in, and on every transmission, you always want to make sure that the converter's free and that you're flush. And then once it's free, you got to be able to spin it with one finger. Here's our clearance. See that? That's our clearance that we need so the flex plate flexes and the converter is not pushing on the pump gears. So we're going to push this, pull this out, go to the converter bolt, and then we're going to put the converter bolts in with one drop of Loctite. And we're going to use my special Mopar wrench that we got for tightening these. And we'll show you how to do that next. One drop of Loctite, guys. Don't dunk the bolt in there like I do. <laughs> All right, this is a great tech tip for you guys. Um, I, I put this in one of my videos, but we're going to put this in here for uh, Dylan's audience. If you notice, I got two two box and wrenches, or both three quarter. And if you look at this wrench and how far down, you actually have to put the bolt in for it to grab the threads all the way around. It's the way that all these wrenches are designed, and actually, Craftsman is probably the worst. This one's a Matco, this one's a Snap-on. So what you guys can do is take any three-quarter wrench and flatten the, um, take some material off it on a belt sander or something and flatten that. So that way, when you go to tighten the bolts, and this is probably more for big block guys than it is for small block guys, and this bolt pattern on the Frost Sprite is a small block, but for, for you big block guys, um, sand that wrench down so you can grab the whole bolt because a lot of times with the thickness of the wrench and the flywheel is going to prevent you from going any further in once this converter is on the torque converter or I mean the, the bolts on the torque converter by flattening this area out it's going to allow you to get more of the hex on the head of the bolt it's a great tip and then always make sure you put just one drop of Loctite on there and the bolts will never come loose one drop one drop <laughs> One, one drop, guys. One. one drop on these bolts. Unless you don't like who's working on it next. Yeah. And I. Red in for it. <laughs> JB Weld. This converter is a 90 degree converter, which means all the bolts are evenly spaced. Um, Chrysler started doing that in 1996 and up, but all the older Mopars from '62 to 93 or 94, they're, they're offset. And Chrysler did that because the counterweights, and we're gonna make sure we're pulled all the way up, um, for the counterweights for externally balanced motors. So once you got this tight, I mean, we can probably get in here with the torque wrench because it's a small block, but it was a big block. You have to, the only way you can tighten the wrench, the uh, converter bolts, is with a whammer. With the whammer is the only way. Or a BMF. Wow, this motor's got some good compression. <laughs> oh, I know. The other converter bolt's hitting it. So we're going to back up. Alright, so that's how you do it. James, I'm going to let you put the other three in. Alright. Alright guys, so the other thing we just did, we just put new studs in the transmission tail shaft right here so that this will hold on the uh, transmission mounting plate. So we just got the studs installed. And we will be working on the cross member here, cross brace, in just a second. And see what we need to do with that. 
But so far, it's going pretty good. Transmission is bolted in, fits like a glove. We we're just trying to get everything mounted up to it. Dylan, go down with the drill bit. I need three hands. Thank you. All right, so here's the uh, transmission uh, mounting bracket. And you just seen John drilling out the uh, bolt holes for those studs. They had to be lar uh, enlarged just a little bit to fit these studs. Because we were going from a metric bolt to a standard, and these are uh, 7 16 So they're a little bit bigger than 15 millimeter. That's why we had to drill it out. And this is the factory bracket right here. So the only thing you had to do to it was enlarge the holes in the bracket itself. All right, I'm gonna show you one thing real quick and then I'll show you again after we get done with it. This is the transmission cross member and these are the mounting locations for the mount. And we are gonna need to lengthen these slots just a little bit because on the 46RE, the bolt pattern lands about right here at the top of this slot. So we're gonna lengthen these up some so that we can use this cross brace still and it should fit up just fine. So after John gets done with it, we'll show you what it looks like. Okay guys, we got the drive shaft slid in. He's torquing down. <clears throat> He's torquing down the drive shaft bolts right now. And the, st the stock drive shaft looks like it does fit and will work perfectly fine on this transmission swap. Two-wheel drive 545 RFE to a 46 RE. That's the stock drive shaft. And it's fitting like a glove. So next up is going to be the transmission cross brace right here that we are modifying a little bit right now to be able to mount the studs on the transmission mount to it. All right, guys, as you see, we got the transmission bolted up to the cross member right here. And as we showed you, we had to modify these slots a little bit to allow the studs to mount to this plate. And we got them all mounted up. So this all fit perfectly fine after a little modification. This is the cooling lines right here. And that is how we adapt to the factory transmission cooling lines. John has this little neat setup that basically will go from factory line to the braided line. And then these will simply attach to the new transmission very easily. And as you can see, we got the cable hooked up to the transmission now. So we're moving along. And we're gonna do a technical end on how to adjust the cable. And I'm gonna show you so you know do you ever have to adjust the cable? Okay. There is a right way and a wrong way of doing it. Oh yeah, always so, a right way and a wrong way. Great information for the guys out there for the computer. Alright the right, guys, real quick, we're on to the wiring steps of doing the 46RE swap. And there's one wire that John has marked out here to pick up your park and neutral signal out of the factory connector plug that plugs on to the stock 545 transmission. And that wire is up here where we are currently soldering it together. But out of the factory connector plug right here, it's the dark blue and yellow wire. You'll, so you'll see a dark blue yellow wire and it's going to be wired to the black wire coming out of John's harness. Or pin number four, if you got the yeah. schematic, it's pin number four. Pin number four, also, if you have this secret book. It ain't secret if you want the book. Or, if you guys, I would be more than happy to give you a copy of that page. There you go. And put it on the website. This is, you can get this book anywhere. 
but you don't want to even though it says 68 it works for any 68 or 545 it's for any rfe any anything so we got the park and neutral switch wired up and uh we're, we got the trans brake and torque converter lockup wires to go still so we got two more wires to wire up and uh, then we're going to be working on hooking up the cable for the shifter but everything's coming around pretty good all right guys we're about to do some more technical we got james up in the truck he's going to work the shifter and we got john down here at the transmission he's going to hook up the uh, shifter cable and there is a right way only to do this um, the, the shifter needs to be in fourth gear correct so you want to have your shifter in fourth gear there you go. The holder guy, that's your job as the holder guy. So you can put the shifter through the bracket over here. Yeah, I gotta take off the little rubber thingies first. These are just little dust covers, All right? Other hand. You're in fourth? There, and then one goes here. All right, the last two pieces. You did such a good job, Junior. Damn, what a good kid. Found something you're good at. <laughs> Are we rolling? Oh, yeah, we've been rolling. Okay. Here, Clayton, come hold this flashlight. Be that guy. What I needed is or I he needed can hold it. So it goes right here so you can really see how's that? That works. Does that works? Okay. Um <laughs> shine the camera on her, watch her run away. Camera, what's camera. up? <laughs> Come here. You know, this chick used to help me work on cars when we were younger. She had a 69 Chevelle SS 396, and now she complains that Mr. Haney ships too hard. Yes, dear. Okay. Drive careful. I'll call you later. See ya, Tots. All right. Take two. Take 1,000. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show you, gentlemen, and ladies, the proper way to adjust an aftermarket shift cable. And this this goes for any car, for any shifter. Um, the procedure is the same. It seems like a lot of times I get calls, it's uh, sometimes people get it incorrectly. So this is the way I've done it for years. It seems to be the best way. And so we're gonna show you how to do it. Now I took the cutter pin out that normally goes up in here. And, uh, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to get your cable to where you think you got it adjusted. If it's a four speed, you want to put it all the way down. Or depending what transmission you have, you want the shifter as far back as you, uh, you can go. If it's an automatic, that means it's low one. If it's a reverse manual, that means it's three, th third gear or fourth gear, depending on what transmission you have. And so as you see, as I take this in and out it's nice and free you're going to put someone up in the in the vehicle and you're going to give them orders to shift the transmission so james shifted in the third so now we're going to pull this out and make sure this is still free go to second it's still free i want to come all the way out see how it moved that little bit mm -hmm. So that's not good. I mean, it's just so minute. Very little. Very but you little. want to make sure it's free. So now that's going in, go back to third. Third. Nice and free. Go back to fourth. Fourth. See how nice and free that is? Gotcha. That's got to do that in all the gears. 
you don't need to check reverse, you don't need, you don't need to check park. But that is the, the correct way to do the adjustment. This, I call this a clevis, adjustable clevis, has to be free. If you pull this down and the linkage arm goes think a little bit one way or a little bit the other way, it's not adjusted correctly. And then the manual valve is not going to open the fluid to that gear that it needs fully because the linkage is not adjusted. So let me put this cotter pin in and I'm going to give you fellas one more tip. The next tip is, and I see it's pretty close, we're going to just move that down. If you notice the pan rail is right here where the oil pan bolts to. That surface is machine on the transmission case is the same surface that the valve body is bolted to. So the valve body is level and all Chrysler transmissions are, are um, the oil pan is not level with the ground. It goes at a little bit of an upgrade. So you want to make sure that the cable from the pan rail to here in park position and in low one or fourth gear is the same front to back. You don't want the cables going up at an angle or down at an angle. The throw of the cable it should be as straight as possible. There free, you, tip, free tip of the day. There you go, guys. Free tip of the day. That's how you adjust a cable on this transmission swap and many others. On any transmission with an, a, any transmission with any aftermarket shifter, is that tip work for any of any of them? So take that to the bank. Cha ching. Take that to the bank and shift it. All right, guys, I'm going to show you what we got going on for the shifter area and what I did to mount my shifter. So as you can see, it's still in the works, but this is the shifter plate that I made out of a half inch piece of MDF board. And as you can see, I just kind of cut it out, sanded it. We have three bolts on each side that mounts to the stock console and then I have a hole here for the cable and wiring to go down under the console for the shifter and then the shifter bolts onto the board with four bolts and nuts and then right here is for my cigarette lighter plug or my 12 volt uh, socket which is right here. This is the this is the factory 12 volt socket out of the stock uh, center console piece. So that I drilled out, and it will drop right in there flush, and still plugs into the factory harness underneath this board to give me my 12 volt power supply still. And then I went to the parts store because I still want my two cup holders that I'm missing now, and I just got a pretty much a generic adjustable cup holder that will mount down with two screws onto the board and then for the board itself what we're going to do my wife is actually going to uh, sew together some vinyl that we bought and if you're familiar with how my old uh, factory uh, console lid was up here the it was two-toned it had like this silver you see on the dash here came down on this factory piece on both sides and then in the center it was black so we got some silver vinyl and we got some black vinyl and she's gonna do an inside seam stitch on this uh, board to cover it and it'll have the two-tone effect so we'll have the two silver stripes on either side with the black in the middle and basically it will more or less when it's all put together it'll look pretty close to the stock appearance minus the ginormous race shifter um, but it's going to look pretty freaking good i'm definitely happy with it and uh, it works and functions just like it needs to and there is the buttons there. I'm going to show you the buttons here on the other side. So here is the buttons. The top button here on the side 
that is the trans brake button and then this button here that's kind of going straight is for the torque converter lockup button pretty straightforward we put some coat bracing stickers on the shifter because definitely want to represent John as much as possible with all the help I've been getting with this and uh, man guys I'm super stoked with uh, this build so far we are almost done we're just uh, we still got to get the starter installed do a little bit of tightening up on some things and then we are gonna be ready to start this thing very soon so stay tuned all right guys we've got to show you one more thing that's a little technical um, on the trucks like mine that had the center console shift on your factory shifter you have the shifter wiring harness that plugs into the vehicle harness right here and on that factory shifter there is basically a yes no switch right here that has a little plunger button and for your key to be able to go on and off and come out of the socket and basically for it to register register park or neutral or whatever the switch needs to be mashed down so what we've done right now is we ran a zip tie around it just to activate this switch so that it thinks it's in park and or neutral so that the key will function and basically let the key turn so we can start the truck and get the key back out um, so that's one more thing you're going to have to do um, but that's it just a little zip tie electrical tape or whatnot and just let the harness sit in here and zip tie it up you should be good to go all right guys so we are at the starter and i want to show you the starter modifications that we had to do to be able to fit the new starter in uh, this starter is basically for uh, vehicles that is using a third gen hemi but they're going to an old style uh, transmission like a 46re or 518 or something like that um, this starter is designed for if that application has long tube headers on it like mine um, the mini starter that we had tried before actually was contacting the headers and would not fit so we had to go with this starter and it as you can see provides tons of room for the long tube headers and that is not a problem but it does require a modification to the engine block and as you can see right here um, these two holes on the engine block we had to cut basically half the bolt hole off because um, they were contacting the starter and in the in the instructions it said that this would most likely have to be performed for the starter to fit um, so we had to grind out these bolt holes down so it would not hit the case of the starter and i'll show you what they looked like on the other side so as you can see up there at the top you can see what we cut those two bolt holes the one on the left and the one on the right we had to grind those down basically in half to fit the starter and what those holes are for it's not a big deal and we're still going to be able to utilize it and i'm going to show you what that is so my son here is holding this is the brace that mounts to those engine block locations right here there's two bolts on each side and then down here on the bottom it has four bolt holes to mount up to the transmission case so what we have is we're going to be able to bolt it up with both bolt holes up here on the passenger side block and then we're going to have a bolt catch each corner of the transmission case and then obviously these two holes here we're not going to be able to use because we don't have any threads there anymore um, but we can still use that cover and basically what that thing does is just a cover to keep the dust out of the bell housing and it does help try to brace up the engine block and the transmission a little bit more but that is what you have to do with the starter um, in this application i have long tubes now if you had a truck that had um the stock manifold logs 
or possibly shorty headers um, the original mini starter would probably fit it would definitely fit if you have factory manifolds um, some shorty headers are still pretty tight it just depends but with long tubes you're probably gonna have to use this starter and uh, that's it not a big deal just something we had to do to make this work so we're gonna move on forward Bad bitch. We about just sent the laptop to outer space. <laughs> 